Okay. All right, let's get let's get started with our budget. Okay. Yeah. David, you're up first. David, we're doing David first. Yeah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I believe uh, each line, for the most part, in the building department is exact or similar to last year, except for a few. Um, I'm kind of going to go backwards here, but line 7100, um, I shifted some dollars into the conferences to try and maybe um, expose the Heritage Commission to some more professional development. That's part of being a certified local government. Uh, we have to provide training each year. What we did last year and most likely in years previous was bring someone in to kind of talk about different historic preservation topics, but there are a multitude of historic preservation conferences a year and one of them is the Missouri um, Preservation Conference, of course, a little more local than going to something out of state and I'd like to offer that to them. Not all of them would need it. Uh, Donna is a, I mean, she works for the Department of Natural Resources, so she probably wouldn't need it, but I'd like to offer it to them. The dollars in that line I shifted out of uh, 7060 special services, which we haven't used any of so far this year, but as you've been used in the past for projects uh, out of the building department. So I left the remainder in that line. Um, but that also would cover training for the it would, that city, amount. city staff. Correct. Uh, one of the, the ISO came in and did a building code study one of the comments they had was that our uh, we didn't have the bu a, bu a budget for training opportunities for the building code folks. Uh, so, so getting some training hours for them satisfies the ISO requirement. Yes, there were already dollars in that uh, line, 7,100, approximately a thousand, maybe 1,500 in years past. Uh, but I took 5,000 out of 70, 60. Uh, left 5,000 in that and changed it to 7,100, took that up to 6,000. Where's that going to be held at? Uh, this year it was held, I believe, in St. Joseph, oh. but it alternates. Correct. This would be next summer. If they, you know, I'll, if this is approved, I'll talk to them and see if that's something that they're interested in. Uh, that particular conference, not the training per se, because I'm sure someone would be interested in that. So it could be the same road spot. It could be. Yeah. Absolutely. So Dave, you're talking about 11.2 percent increase, pretty substantial increase. Do you mind if I go through the other changes sure. first? I'm sorry, Bob. Uh, line 6021, I did uh, increase from 500, approximately 500 to 1,000. It's been 1,000 in some years past. And that is more education and training. Uh, Martin just kind of alluded to the fact that uh, building code training, uh, things of that nature for Mike, and then a few other things for me when it comes to floodplain management and the, the, that uh, those topics. And then the major uh, <coughs> change was in line 5,000, which is the top line there of salaries. Um, I'd like to take Mike from, or the building inspector from approximately 20, I don't know, what's he doing? What's he do six times? About 18 hours a week to 30. A um, couple reasons. One, it'd be nice to be able to offer our inspector five days a week instead of three to our folks who are building. I don't know that it'll be every year that we have seven or eight new homes going up at the same time. It seems a bit unusual, but we have that right now. And in addition to that, in years past, at least last year, according to staff reports, we averaged about 12 or 13 occupancy inspections a month, and right now we're doing on average about 27. Isn't That's that gonna, a good thing. Wouldn't that increase too with the change in our, could that possibly increase in the change in, now that we're changing from electric bills, so we'll probably be doing more inspections on, yes, sir. on rental properties? I think that's part of it, and uh, part of it is, you know, Mike and the departments follow up on those uh, homes and apartments that need to be inspected. So. Um, that number has arisen, and while I can do those, and will continue to do them when Mike can't, it's nice to have Mike available to do those, or the building inspector, available to do those five days a week instead of just three. It opens uh, me up a little bit. Coming back to what Bob said, um, it is approximately a, uh, 
11 or 12 percent increase, and that is significant. But if you uh, look at fiscal year 2018, uh, that did not include a, uh, an entire year's worth of community development administrator. The community development administrator resigned and there were three or four months where there was no one in that position. So that savings uh, was wonderful, but that is why that actual number is uh, lower. The year prior where there was a uh, full-time community development administrator and then a building inspector, uh, the actuals were $104,410. That included also quite a bit of uh, medical insurance, which Mike or I neither one take at this point. And yes, I would like to take some of that and put it into salaries and kind of go back. If you look at what I'm proposing, which is about $105,000, that increase is very minimal compared to the last year of $104,000 where there was a community development administrator the entire year. So, in fact, it's about a 1% increase instead of a 11 or 12% increase. Would the present building inspector be up for going to 30 RE? I've spoke to Mike. As of September, he can work as much as he wants. Yeah, the, the schedule he has now was limited because of his Social Security. Right. And once he reaches full retirement age, he can work as many hours as, oh, yeah. as he wants without affecting his Social Security income. Yeah. And, and so uh, <clears throat> we actually had kind of anticipated this when we hired him, knowing he would be limited hours for at least the first, the first year and a half. Yeah. So this would start in October, and like I said, Mike would be available in September. It uh, doesn't mean he'd work 30 hours every week right now. There are days where he needs a personal day or days where we need him four days, but uh, I mean, we've got a significant savings right now in the payroll line and I would anticipate a year to date this year and I would anticipate the same thing next year. Uh, Mike staying part time would still have no benefits to account for so that line wouldn't increase but uh, I would like to take him up to five days a week. But by law anybody over 30 hours is entitled to that. You have to average over 30 over the course of a period of time. Right. I don't think he will because he takes certain weeks of vacation. He'll take a day off here and there. I doubt that he'll average 30 over the course of a year. I don't know, since we've got a farmer building inspector well, here. We got by for many years on 24 hours a week. I don't see it increasing. Those, I mean, I understand what uh, Jimmy's saying. Those are why I gave you the reasons of we have nearly twice the occupancy inspections, which doesn't take loads of time but it sure is nice uh, to have him available five days a week for our landlords and citizens and real estate agents and homeowners uh, and those building instead of three days a week so is that the majority of, of his workload is occupancy inspections or plan work? review plan reviewing yeah and like i said this year this and, summer and new, and new construction inspections yeah he's had eight new homes to look at uh, so, and that's in addition to a few commercial projects. Would you do three eight? Right. Twenty four. Yeah. So you did. What, I, what I always did, Buck. Everybody knew what day I worked. If I had to, I would come in on Saturdays. To, yeah, if, if somebody had a something that had to be done, you know, like pouring concrete or something. I remember that. And yeah. Mike does the same thing. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't work three eights, though. He works three sixes. So it is less than it used to be. Yeah. Could we uh, potentially think about meeting in the middle and doing three eights or four sixes? Or you're wanting to do five sixes, right? Five sixes. So he obviously he probably doesn't want to work eight hours a day. Um, yeah. He's fairly flexible, but. Uh, yeah, my goal would be to have him available five days a week. If we can do something else, then we'll do something else. That's just my goal. It frees me up to do more of the things I need to do um, and also gives, like I said, all those folks who need inspections a chance to schedule one every day of the week. Um, Jimmy's right. Some of the contractors get to know it, you know, your locals but others will call and need one. And I know that we are not um, 
compelled to give them an inspection at notice, but we do our darndest to do that for them. If they need a concrete inspection, a framing inspection, we try to get out there as quickly as possible. So if you're going to do four sixes, would the day off be better Monday or Friday? Probably Friday. But I mean, we can work that out with Mike. I'm just thinking yeah. out loud. My experience is that you get those calls on Friday. I've got the whole dog. It's supposed to rain this weekend. I need it in space. You know, it, it's, 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 it's a mixed bag. But a lot of times happen. I come in Monday and four or five people call in a row that morning. Yeah. Martin, there was, uh, I don't recall exactly, but there was some sort of inspection that, that you had mentioned at one of the first meetings that when I was on, when we joined the board about there's certain inspections that maybe the city doesn't have to do that we, that we provide right now. Do you recall bringing that up or what it was? Uh, no, but I think I can, can guess. But we, every building permit, you schedule four inspections. But that doesn't mean you only do four. I mean, sometimes you have to go back. And uh, more complicated projects like the hospital require more visits. Uh, but for just a residential inspection, it's usually four. I think I was talking about courtesy inspections. I think it was called, somebody calls and says, could you come look at this and tell me if it's OK? Uh, we do that from time to time. I'm not a big fan of courtesy inspections because I don't think it's, we, we don't want to be in a position of telling somebody the right way to construct it. It's like giving engineering advice. It's, right. not, it's, not, it's not a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but circumstances sometimes well, Sometimes you have to come back and inspect what you just gave them permission to do. Right. <laughs> well, I will, uh, I'll go back and try to research and see if that, that is what it, you were talking about. I don't remember exactly. But I was just trying to potentially come up with a way to easy or lessen your guys' workload. If, if there's any possibilities of doing that, if there's anything that optional that we don't we're not obligated to do but well i think it, the four the four inspections is kind of the typical per per, per residential structure i mean looking at other communities that may just have one person in this role for everything they typically don't do occupancy inspections but mm -hmm. i don't suggest taking those off the book <laughs> so did I understand you, Dave? He's the only one that can do occupancy inspections. No, sir. I also do occupancy okay. inspections. But what about yeah. building inspections? I will do some of the basic ones, foundation, site, obviously, or or um, footings, things like that. But he should be doing, you know, the rest of those. He has the training. He has the professional development background, framing, uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. Um, so. You know, can he give me guidance and I go out and look and see if a pipe is the right size? Absolutely. But typically on new builds, there's a lot more detail to that than I should be doing. Martin, I guess, and I apologize for missing the last meeting and stuff, but as far as our overall budget process, I mean, uh, looking at the overall picture, how are our departments? Is everybody coming in the same, more or less? Well, I mean, they're all kind of, with the exception of this one, but then pretty much the same. And, 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 and what you missed uh, was the statement that uh, you're not being asked to approve this budget tonight. Right. right. Uh, we're reviewing them. Uh, we expect to go through them and then have kind of the end of the process is sitting down and going through and making the final decision on, on what, you want, what you want to do. But if you want to provide the guidance to budget for four Four, six hour days, and then we made it to tell us now, and we'll go ahead and adjust the right. budget so it's off the table. Well, that's the reason for asking and stuff. I don't want to leave them down and fall past the thing. We come up with 30 hours a week and more money, and then we don't approve it. So. Any other questions? Oh. Any other comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it.
good evening, everyone. Um, so I have um, two budgets that I'll be talking with you about. Um, the first one is on your page 16 and 17, or I guess you have sheets like I do. So um, 16 and 17 are the Welcome Center budget and marketing. And um, I developed this by taking a projection of where we are now on our eight month actual column and kind of uh, figuring on where I think we'll be at the end of the year. Um, the first category up there, which is salaries, insurance, and so on, you can see I just left that based on what the request was last year. If there are um, uh, incremental raises or anything like that, that's all up to the alderman and that would be uh, considered a later date. Um, so I just left that the way it was. Um, under materials and supplies, there are a couple of uh, line items I would draw your attention to. Um, most of these uh, are pretty close to what it was last year. Um, you see line item 6016. Uh, last year that was at 15,000 and uh, I put that down to 5,000 next year. This is a, a particular type of a grant for tourism and you'll hear on page two, uh, we have another type of grant for tourism that we'll be getting more of next year. So, um, but for now, I just took this one down from 15,000 to 5,000. And then a little bit further on down, uh, office, is that office supplies? Um, office supplies, which last year we had budgeted $2,500. And right now on the year to date, we're at <laughs> A little over $1,400, so I'm projecting will probably come out um, under what last year's <coughs> budgeted amount was. And so next year, I'm saying we could probably budget $2,200 um, with a bottom line in that category of $54,275. Um, part of the, um, uh, basically the building, uh, maintenance types of expenses begin at the bottom of this page. And I just um, reduced the um, electrical budget a little bit just based on um, where we were last year's actual. We ended up at $3,300. We budgeted for $4,000. I'm projecting it's probably going to come in about $3,200. So I put, to be safe, uh, $3,500 in for the budget for next year. And so that takes us to page 17. And on line item 7060, um, this was budgeted at uh, $1,250. We're at $470 on the year. I'm projecting um, that we'll come in under budget for this year and that maybe we'll only need a budget $500 for that next year. Service and repairs. Uh, netted about 1,550 lower than um, our current adopted budget. And then the next section, capital outlay. Um, so that begins with um, 7163, which are program grants, and then 7168 co-op grant. This is the, um, the co-op grant that we get from the State Division of Tourism. And this year, um, as I had reported at earlier meetings, we have uh, qualified for a higher level of uh, participation in their co-op grant program. Um, last year, uh, we were only eligible for a very minimal amount, but by partnering with the next county to the west of us, St. Francis County, the state is encouraging partnerships right now. So we gave them a joint proposal and they've approved a two county amount of $20,000. That means 10,000 for St. Genevieve and 10,000 for St. Francis County. Um, but we're the de designated marketing organization, so um, the whole thing flows through us. So we went from um, basically uh, $6,000 up to $10,000 for St. Genevieve, and um, the rest of that will be covered by um, St. Francis County. So I just wanted you to know about how that works out. And if you have a questions about how this works out, you could certainly contact me afterwards, but that increase is because of our increased eligibility. There's no money transfer back to St. Francis County. 
It said that the activities to, to promote St. Francis County will be handled by your office? We won't uh, handle their promotion, but their uh, financial the bills will activities, come to you. yeah, will come through us. So in other words, they're going to pay us back ten thousand dollars. Correct. It'll come from the state, but yes. Yeah. So that amount really should be ten thousand dollars, and it's so much money. Well, I know, but I don't want to. Uh, I, I don't want to list it lower because it will have to go through, you know, through this account. I wasn't we're, we're sure how to We're going to get twenty thousand to spend. Right. And ten thousand of it will be to pay St. Francis County's bills, but it'll still be cut on by the city's check, and, and, and we'll be accounting for it. And they've done this in other um, mm, partnerships across the state, so I'm planning on talking to some of those tourism directors in those other communities and see how they're doing it, um, because they've been doing this for a couple of years now. So, now, Do they also want evidence that the city is cooperating with the adjoining county in, in, in terms of scheduling the marketing effort? Uh, they don't want evidence of it. It's basically after, so, so in my proposal, I had to turn in their activities and our activities. It was approved, and now as long okay. as we do those activities, we'll get reimbursed <coughs> for them. Um, so the next, so the, I just wanted you to understand that. So um, that's why that's quite a bit of increase there. Um, on office equipment, I just brought that down uh, to about 1,500. Um, building improvements, landscaping improvements, kept those the same. Uh, so with that um, difference in that category, um, the total amount is 24.6, and then that brings our total budget for that department to 247.440, which is a net increase of $1,355 over last year's budget. Sandra, looking at one of the big items, you know, your tour expenses, what all is included in that? Oh, that's an excellent question. So when we have tour buses come to St. Genevieve, um, they uh, write a check for their tour expenses, and that comes in on an income line item that I can't remember right now. But the income comes into the city, and then we pay the expenses. So all the admissions to the historic sites that they're doing if there's a step on guide um, you know anything like that we're paying those expenses out of uh, the fees that they have paid into the budget so it's an in and out so what's going to happen between now and the end of the year basically increase that from 13 to 26 So it's it will be right at 26.5 in terms of expenses. Right. It will probably be right at 26.5. It's kind of hard to predict, but like right now we have some invoices that we need to you know to pay on uh, recent tours, and um, each month we uh, have checks that we issue to the historic sites to also reimburse them for passport tours. Okay. You know, looking at 16, we're at 36.7. 17, we're at 33. You know, it's kind of bounced around a lot. Just wondering why that expense changed so much. Uh, so, we did used to sell uh, more passports. Um, that has dropped back a little bit because of the way the passports are handled now. Um, so, it'll be interesting to see next year how those go because of the national parks coming in. And one thing that would be kind of handy is whenever you have. You know, like that twenty thousand dollar expense and stuff. If you're going to have a credit pack, you know, against that, list that as a footnote at the bottom. In my notes. Right. In my yes. Notes. See, the problem. I have a draft of those that um, that Sue and I will be working on, and I haven't even met with Martin and Sue about this yet. Um, but we usually come up with a little list of notes about the offsets. Right. But they won't show up on the printout there in her database in the spreadsheet. Right. Um, but that's um, a, often a problem. 
when a department's activities generates revenue, the revenue doesn't get refunded in any way to the department's budget. It goes into the general fund. So all of the revenue we receive goes into the general fund. All the expenditures come out of the line items, but you're not seeing the relationship between the two. Right. So what I usually do is a list of the line items where income is coming in, and I usually, um, Sue and I get together about this, and we put it on a separate sheet like this that shows offsets in tourism in terms of revenue. We could and, produce and some, that before the final well, meeting. I remember seeing the number we talked about last year and stuff, the 40, yeah, It was 46,000 <laughs> offsets right. last year. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, we, let, we, we will make, we'll, we'll have a, a sheet that shows that before your final decision. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bob, you just mentioned um, the, the revenue that comes in for tours and talking about that. One of the other places, um, in addition to what I already talked about with the grants, um, in addition to that, uh, $5,000 of my salary is offset by economic development. So that's being paid to the city to, uh, you know, to offset some of my salary. Then there's a second um, page in your packet that's page number 25. Um, this is, and this one shows revenues and expenses on one page. Um, so this is based on the 2% lodging tax that is generated by um, hotel, motel, Airbnb, VRBO, um, any lodging that is within St. Genevieve City limits collects a 2% lodging tax from the people that stay there and they submit it to the city and um, this is part of the tourism tax commission um, and it is uh, a fund that by statute is has oversight by a, a five member panel the tourism tax commission so um, you can see that uh, basically uh, what I did here was I just took last year's revenue and expenses and use the same numbers. Um, it is a rolling fund, so it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't close out at the end of the city's fiscal year, because if there are uh, tax revenues remaining in there, the Tourism Tax Commission is responsible to approve expenses to promote tourism out of those funds. Yeah, it also, we have a statutory obligation to keep those funds se separate from the city's general fund, because it's a special, tax that's collected and uh, as she says if, if, if the funds aren't expended they unlike the general revenue fund where it all goes back to be reallocated later it has to stay in this account for the Commission to determine how to use it so that's why it has a separate fund number fund number 23 you can see the revenues and expenses on one page and um, basically I just used last year's budget item for those items because uh, that just rolls over at the end of the year. Did they get the taxing situation with the VRBOs and all that figured out yet? Mm -hmm. Well, basically when they um, come in to City Hall for their uh, business license, uh, Pam gives them the information. If they're a lodging property, Pam gives them the information about how to collect the lodging tax and what their responsibilities are. and. Um, in good faith, uh, we believe that they are following that procedure. I mean, they got their software figured out to assess that tax. No. Oh, you mean you mean at the corporate level with Airbnb.com? Yes. They they are not collecting the local tax. So they they don't collect it for them. They have to collect it locally. Okay. It, they're responsible for it with their business. I have Whether shared Airbnb all of my them. communications with Airbnb, where they say they're working on it. So. The, the owners know that Airbnb has been contacted. They haven't produced any results. And as she says, we trust they know that until that happens, they need to make their their, their payments. But we have no way of knowing if they're paying. Well, they submit it to Pam. They submit yeah, no, but their I don't check. know how many people stay there. We don't know how much if they actually pay the tax. Right. And do we have any outstanding? I know we had a problem. At this time, there is not such an issue. Sandra, looking back on, on page 17, account number 6810, um, with the age of the building, do you anticipate any 
Well, so two years in a row, I budgeted for the replacement of an air conditioning unit. There are three units there, and we've replaced two out of the three. The third one was a little younger, and it doesn't seem to have uh, caused any problems. So we're keeping it as long as we can. But, um, you know, we, we have just had the regular maintenance this year, nothing outstanding. you anticipate anything or well, only if we have to replace that one air conditioning unit. Uh, and then, I mean, I could come back with, you know, an update about that. Quick question. What would, um, in the estimated emergency fund on the tourism tax, Yes. what would that be used for, for any? So if there was, uh, you know, a year where we were flooded for six months and there was no one staying in any of the lodging and there was, no tax being collected that emergency fund would give them something to help out to promote things to get things back in or to pay you know, the bills that shape. they've incurred right you know, that, right it, it, exactly to pay bills if if there had been no revenue coming in to help cover that okay. hopefully we don't get to that situation yeah, exactly. um, so i guess this is pretty much specifically used for marketing only uh, as far as the tourism tax. Yeah. By statute, it has to By be statute. just to and, promote and, and, and uh, we are, tourism. And we, you, we, you need to approve the budget, but let me back up. The statute that authorized the, the lodging tax mandated the establishment of the Tourism Tax Commission to be the stewards of that money. For years, they kept their own checkbook. They, collected the money, they wrote the mm -hmm. checks. Uh, when I got here, we made an effort to kind of merge the Tourism Advisory Council with the Tax Commission so that they're working well together and, and set up independently and to make the accounting of the use of the funds part of the city's uh, information management system. Because I don't think they could have withstood an audit having seen the checkbook that they were keeping. <laughs> So they agreed to all of that, but, but, but they don't have to do it this way. And we, you, really can't tell them how to spend their money. It's, it's their decision. We're just keeping the record. And they ask, we have discussions about things. They ask me for recommendations from the fund, and sometimes they have different opinions, and we go in a different direction. And, um, but generally, it's been pretty successful because they've been able to um, pick up on some large projects that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. So it's been a real positive. Also, if anyone has any questions, like they don't think of it right now and they have a question, um, 883-7097, I'm always available, um, happy to go through anything in addition. So. Thank you. Thank you. Martin, it's 5.50, you want to try five minutes. You got it, won't, it won't take much longer than that. Okay, good. Well, the only difference between the administrative fund last year, this year, is in the personnel item, and that's all insurance driven. So we don't project, we don't. Which it, line item? Oh. Well, it's the look at the increases in. What about the. You have a note. Oh, and I'm leases. sorry, it's not all. Yeah. And, and the. The. Uh, Half of the of Lisa's salary. Half coming. or a third. So a third, a third on third. page. Thank you. So where are the other two thirds going? Water. Sewer. This is your budget. This is the money that's spent to support the operations of the, uh, the Board of Aldermen. I mean, obviously you see things in there that aren't related to your activities, such as our payment to the recycling center, yeah. uh, this contract we have with the county. Um,
should the management of our website and email accounts go under 7136 or is that under a different one? It's in administration. And we actually just have it like in our line 6700 with our phone services. Okay. What is uh, membership slash dues 6025? What is that used for? Uh, membership in the Missouri Municipal League, um, City Clerks Association. Are you in legislative? I'm legislative, yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 6025. It was an administrator. That was it's the Missouri Municipal League for you guys to attend this. Straight 2000 ish. I'm sorry, are we on to legislative now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Seventy one oh eight reflects what we anticipate we will receive from charter. No, that's the that's the expense that we're given channel seven. Right, sorry, but that in, nine, the increase reflects wasn't there an increase in that was there not an increase in that tax? The tax no. remains the same. The collections okay. fluctuate from time to time based on what the state Okay. Thinks so they it's collected. twenty three thousand five hundred right now. And it's proposed to go up to thirty-nine thousand. We have given yeah. a certain we, percentage. That, that was for a contract. Yeah, that was, was a contract. Yeah. That was it's what the contract was right. between the the city and the, the television, mm -hmm. and that's what it had been for a while. And the, the the board wasn't getting what was promised for the contract. The TV so, board. Yeah. yeah. TV so board. when when did that contract? Last year, right? Yeah. During the year. Or, I mean, well, we, it gets resigned every year. Like February. February. Yeah. So it doesn't line up with our fiscal year. No. no. So if we, okay. So that's February? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Collect more than we pay out. Yeah. Yes. I don't know what the figure is. It was like forty-eight thousand. Yeah. What? Are we going to discuss judicial? It was forty-four. Probably wait for the next time. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we need to wait. We only got five minutes, but we need to start the meeting. Hmm? Yeah. We don't have five minutes. We got to go get the list. All right. Got kind of a five minute break. We we'll start the meeting. Yeah. Can I have your attention, please? If you didn't, uh, if you want to speak tonight on uh, any of the ordinances, one in particular I know people are interested in, uh, we ask you to sign a sign-on sheet, a sign-up sheet, and then we'll call on you to speak. Uh, if you haven't signed that, now would be a good time to do it. If everybody who wants to speak has signed it, that's great. Uh, when the public comments come, the mayor will then call on you by name, uh, come forward to the podium here and speak into the microphone so that uh, you can hear, hear what you're saying. And, uh, you know, if somebody spoke and kind of said exactly what you wanted to say, you're not compelled to follow it up and speak and repeat what you've already heard. So uh, just keep that in mind to try and keep the period shorter. Thank and you. And also, I would like to everybody, if you're speaking tonight, you're speaking to the board. I'm not going to have 
speaking to the crowd, we're going to speak to the Board of Aldermen tonight. You know, so just keep that in mind that we're not yelling back across the, the gallery here. We're, we, you're coming up and you're speaking to the board. Okay? Now, can you all stand? Pardon me? Well, we're going to be at the podium. So stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Do a roll call. Sarah Hassler. Here. Alderman Smith. <coughs> Alderwoman Johnson. Here. Alderman Johnson. Here. Alderman Jokers. Here. Alderman Rainey. Here. Alderman Jones. Here. Alderman Prince. Here. Alderman Wilson. Here. Mayor, we have a quorum. Very good. We have a motion on the approval of the agenda. Approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Takes us down to the city administrator's report. Okay, uh, you have before you uh, the uh, the bid results from um, the Chadwell Lane bid uh, ordinance on the agenda tonight to approve uh, the, lo the low bidder, uh, and you have the prices for both concrete, alternative, and asphalt. So uh, at the time that you approve it, you should indicate uh, which which of those options you're interested in pursuing. Uh, Sandra and I attended the Parkland Ready meeting. Uh, they're getting ready to produce uh, a website and, and, and try and market the region uh, of which we are a part. I think Sandra's informed you in the past that uh, the number one site for uh, the region is, is in, at the interstate and Highway 32 area uh, in, in St. Genevieve County. So, the county is likely to be a major uh, benefactor if that uh, their efforts are successful. Um, went to a funding for the future of water and wastewater uh, infrastructure financing. I know that sounds fascinating to all of you. Uh, the state of Missouri the Department of Natural Resources has organized this uh, information campaign. Uh, this year they're holding four of these sessions throughout the state. Uh, you know, I. I at the end of the day, uh, there's nothing new, and there's no new ways of doing it. It's pretty, pretty much heard what I already knew. At, uh, the uh, Mark has uh, reviewed the uh, collector's concerns about uh, authorizing legislation for the collector to collect special tax bills. Uh, I have communicated his findings to her. She acknowledged receipt of it and said that she will give me a call next week to talk about it. She's out of the office today. Uh, so we've had continuing discussion with some interested party for purchasing property at Progress Parkway. Uh, that will be the subject of your closed session tonight. Um, Gary uh, attended the, the levy district meeting. Uh, Gary and the crew have been working diligently to uh, clean up the mess after the uh, floodgates were open, uh, and there was a lot of it. And. Uh, you know, in the past, our efforts haven't really generated sufficient expenses to qualify for the minimum threshold for FEMA reimbursement. Uh, this year, we believe they will. Uh, so Gary's keeping detailed records, as he knows how to do, on uh, what the costs are being incurred, where the material's going. That's always very important. If you take, you've got to put put the material back in the river because if you take it somewhere else, they they get antsy. They consider it polluted material. Uh, so it has to go to a hazardous waste site, although it's not hazardous waste if you put it back in the river, whatever. Um, so there, Gary's following those procedures and he knows about them from past experience. Uh, the, uh, you also have on, on the agenda tonight a uh, contract for engineering services with Chadwell Lane. I had this discussion informally with uh, Bob and Jimmy. Is, Mike, uh, before we started the meeting, uh, at, at our pre-bid conference, we talked about the problems that we will have with deliveries if Chadwell Lane is, is closed. Uh, smaller trucks can come around uh, over the railroad tracks, but as Bob has explained to you, the longer trailers and larger trucks can't negotiate that. Um, 
the contractors uh, acknowledged uh, the need to coordinate their construction activities so that the, the street wasn't closed altogether for long periods of time. And they agreed, or the, the, they all agreed, and the low bidder certainly agreed, to coordinate with uh, Bob's group and the nursing home administration to schedule deliveries so that they make sure they're not working when the tractor trailer has to break the food delivery to 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 uh, to the nursing home or Bob needs to get to his warehouse and gets in and out of his warehouse so it'll just be a coordination issue uh, but the affected parties won't won't lose access altogether to to, to their and Martin their how property. long is this contract that's a good question uh, it's not very long it's like 90 days the engineer gave you 150 days yeah, for concrete. Either way, 150. Okay. They won't take it long. Shouldn't. Be. All right, 150. Uh, Judge Inman uh, contacted me. Uh, dropped off some information. Um, asked us to review and Eric is is doing that whether we've covered all of the fines that we collect uh, now through the municipal court <coughs> because they have to be included in the ordinance authorizing him to 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 do it so uh, we may have to come back with a an ordinance and uh, at our next meeting that picks up like the sheriff's retirement fund which we uh, agreed to collect because the state said we were supposed to although there was some dispute as to whether or not we had to we decided to, better not to, to accept it than to fight it. But that's in addition to current fees. That's not taken out of the fees that we already collect, right? It's a, it's a fee we collect and send on to the state. But the fees that we currently collect in municipal court can and have been changed by the judge. Yes, the judge has re revised some of the dollar amounts well, what I mean is, is the payment to the sheriff's fund, is that an additional fee that's being levied on the fees that the offenders pay? Yes. Paid? Yes. Okay. So it doesn't come out of... Okay. Right. But he's, his point is, if it's not in the ordinance, I can't collect. Right. So once he just wants to make sure everything that we need to cover is, is covered. Uh, and then the county commissioner called me to visit the water park prior to its opening, not because he wanted to give me a grand tour, but he <laughs> wanted to show me where all the fireworks debris went after the fireworks were set off. So uh, that was probably not the best idea, and uh, the nursing home has uh, had a conversation with him, and I imagine uh, some other plan will have to be worked out for next year. But they did, a, but they did give the okay. Yes. Did Gary Nelson gave the I all talked right. to Gary personally. I, I remember us discussing that yeah. before we yeah. gave the okay, that they didn't think that would be an issue. All right. Okay. Anything else? Thanks. David? Ladies and gentlemen, not a whole lot this month on the historic preservation front. Uh, we didn't have a meeting last month, but we will have one Monday. Uh, there are no applications pending, but we're going to go over administrative approvals and talk about the economic hardship section of the historic preservation ordinance. Uh, there's a tally there of the uh, permits and uh, code enforcement uh, items we took care of. We are going to have our next uh, rental housing advisory commission meeting July 18th. We were hoping to have a member of the uh, Missouri Public Service Commission that deals with mobile homes there, but he's going to dial in. So he'll be available to us for questions on speakerphone that evening. Uh, we did have a uh, planning and zoning meeting where we uh, uh, discussed an application for a special use permit and that was uh, approved to recommend to you all and that will be a public hearing on that at the next meeting. <coughs> really, that's it? Yes, sir? Where do we stand on the building at 3rd and Lay Hay? 3rd <coughs> and Lay Hay. Mr. Uh, Nagger, the owner of it, has informed me that he plans to work on a roof this year and then more next year. It'd be nice if he secured the building before he does that. 
What fashion are you talking about? The doors? The doors. The, the overhead doors? Yeah. Okay. I'll let him know that. Any other questions? How many member commission is the rental house? Five. Five members, uh, and I believe uh, Alderman Jones and Alderman Smith are also been liaison members to that commission. But it's open to the public. If, if any other tenant or landlord would like to attend, they're, they're welcome. How many landlords we got? I have no idea on landlords. There's approximately, if you count apartments, houses, duplexes, there's approximately 700, 725 rental units in the city. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Dave. I don't see Kenny. Kenny. He's working tonight. He's working tonight. You gonna? You gonna? <laughs> You gonna do them both? No. <clears throat> but if you have any questions about Kenny's report that, that uh, we can't answer, uh, let me know what they are, and we'll get the answer. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we've been doing a lot of strain, storm drain repair, uh, culvert pipe repairs, cleaning. You see them on my report. Uh, we got the. Handrail back up on Third Street Bridge. We did some asphalt work on Seraphin. <coughs> constantly mowing and weed eating. Uh, we poured a sidewalk on Fourth Street on Walnut where we fixed the storm drain. Gary, speak up. Okay. People can't hear you in the back. <coughs> All right. Mowing weed eating, we fixed a sidewalk on Fourth Street and one on Walnut where we repaired the storm drain. We sickled the creek banks on Lay Hay. We cut up a tree that had uh, fell across and blocked Chadwell Lane. We replaced a couple signs. We serviced the equipment. And we opened the floodgates and been pushing mud. We do have uh, Little Rock Road one lane for the lime company and the railroad to be able to get in. Are you on TV this morning, Gary? Anyway, did a good job. What you got any time frame on Ridgeway that that project? Once we get, you know, we're freed up with the levy stuff. There's a, that project and a couple more to jump on. Right. Thank you. Could we really cover any of the cost of that handrail replacement there on Market Street? That had nothing to do with us. It was Spire. That's the gas company. Really? Yeah. That's part of the property with their little building there. Anything else? Okay. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Any committee reports? <laughs> well, that'll take us to public comments. So I have on my list here, and there again, Martin, if, if you would like to speak tonight, would like to get your name on this list, uh, would appreciate that. I know we had some folks come in a little bit late. Uh, so, wait a minute. Yeah, Sean. Sean. Well, I'll let you get a new list started. Sean Albright, you be the first one up. Um, will you have them state their address, please? I need to state your name and address, please. I need you to speak up, and you have to speak at me. I'm lip reading. Oh, you're, who are you? Why don't you come up here? Okay. Thank you, sir. Technically, I don't have a dog in this fight. Wait, wait a minute. State your name, and then Sean your address. Sean Albright. And your you address? Need that address? Please. 694 Market. I don't have a dog in this fight. I live in my home, I it. I have a garage that I cannot access because there's no curb cuts. I understand that. And the shape of things, that's no big deal. What offends me, and offend may be the wrong word, 
we've made a blanket statement that we're going to try to cover everybody. There are homes in the city that have five, six cars, no place to park. We've got people with illegal tags that are parking in this city that's nothing's done to them. And that's <coughs> what. And I have a unique experience with this. My son is a detective in the southeast Missouri County. They passed an ordinance that your car has to be up to date. Taxes have to be paid. It has to belong to somebody in that house. If it's not, they come hook it up and drive it off because it's illegal. And their theory is, you beat your wife, we take you away. Don't take care of your, your other responsibilities, we take them away. I, I don't understand how we got off on the wrong foot on this. I truly don't. And this is the second time, and I've only been in this town three years, I've seen that things have gotten off on the wrong foot, and then we have to run behind and clean it up. I don't know what the background is in making this decision. I just feel like some people feel their ox is getting gored, other people feel like their ox is doing the gore. We have to make meet the needs of everyone. Somebody's gonna park eight cars behind a seven foot fence and we'll never know about it because they said, oh, I'm just, I've got big dogs. So something, I understand where you are, but understand where we are. You know, if God forbid I ever marry again and I get stepchildren, I don't have any place to put cars. I live on a small lot. It's against my gut to cut, uh, sit on grass, but yet people sit on grass with cars that are leaking fluids, cars that are not licensed to this state, cars that probably do not have insurance, but I don't see anybody, tr you're trying to take care of that situation. But in the meantime, some of us who take care of our things, who take care of, you say I can have five cars, I gotta find what to do with the six. That's my only thing. That, and I can't hear a word you all say out there. <laughs> and it's, it's, for lack of a better word, demeaning to me. All I ask is to be able to hear what people I voted into office say and not have to listen third hand on a television station I cannot hear. That's the end of my lecture. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and if you want to stay, just pull your chair over there and you can be right up close. Thank you. Yeah, you just sit right here. Yes, sir? How come we don't have no audio back here? Can't hear anything. Is that working? Is the microphone on? It's your mic, isn't it? Oh, okay. It's behind you, Marcus. That was there no switch on the mic. Microphone there. Yeah, that we, we might. Does that have a cord long enough at all? I doubt it. That that's for the uh, TV audio only. So whoever wants to speak. Well, Gretchen, you're up next. So. Hello, I'm Gretchen Roth. Come up here. Oh, 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 okay. See, I couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hot. Yeah. I'll stay go. back here. There you go. I'm Gretchen Roth. I live at 898 Jefferson. 
Myself and some neighbors kind of started this ball rolling a little over a year ago. Can you hear me back there? Okay. Um, that being said, this ordinance is not going to touch what is going on across the street from us. He has over 10 vehicles. He'll still have five if this ordinance passes. It also does not address the junk. There's tires. All of you should drive around back to up Herzog Lane and look at what's back there. This doesn't address any of it. That being said, this is kind of like being in Mrs. Webb's sixth grade class. There were two guys that would get everybody, the rest of the class in trouble and we all suffered. There's a lot of people here that are going to be affected that shouldn't be. I, I take this back to the table and let's please work on it some more. I was told that the nuisance ordinance, remember when I was here last year, would not cover it. I don't know why. That was the old city attorney. I don't know why. Um, can that be addressed? Well, why? Let's, let's establish it, Martin, our ordinance on, on vehicles on the, the street. Is there, is it, the way I understand it, the vehicle, if it's registered and licensed, you can have it on the street. And you're on your property or in the street? The nuisance has to address some issue of public health and safety in order to be declared a nuisance. There's vermin, there's rats, there's skeeters, there's snakes. So that kind of addresses that. Well, the licensed vehicle sitting in the driveway doesn't. Thank you for standing. <laughs> but uh, if, if there's old tires sitting in the backyard, yes, that would be a and there's, there's more, there, he cleaned it up a little bit last year when we, when we did this the first time around, but it's just as bad, if not worse now than it was. Um, there also was some discussion last year of what constituted a nuisance property, and none of us could really answer that back then. I've, I've really thought about this a lot. My opinion of what a nuisance property is, is when a single property depresses the rest of the property values in the neighborhood. That's what's happening on our block. So, you know, that's how I look at it. And please, please rework this. This is not a good, this isn't good. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. So you mainly you. Thank you. With the quantity of vehicles. I'm sorry, say that again. You mainly disagree with the quantity of vehicles. Well, I, it looks like Willie Hoffman starter set is what it looks like. If everything was neat and clean and in running order and not have tarps and old tires on it, no, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But there's junk everywhere, leaned up on the cars, on top of the cars, behind the cars, around the cars. It's, it's becoming a, a, a safety hazard as far as mosquito bites, snakes, you know, and, and vermin. You know, I don't. I wouldn't care if he had ten cars as long as it didn't look like next to the Presbyterian Church in the old days. So you know, my description of a nuisance property is when my property doesn't look like everyone else's in the neighborhood. That well, that that certainly does apply there, doesn't it? Thank you. Anyway, that's that's all I have to Thank say. You, Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Christian. Thank you, Joe Steiger. You're next. Joe Steiger, <clears throat> I live at 549 Glenda Street, uh, former alderman. Um, I, uh, I have another uh, citizen that wasn't able to make it. He wrote a pretty lengthy letter, um, but I'm just going to read a couple paragraphs because I think that'll get your, um, again, I think that'll get the point across. And I also had a few uh, words myself. So um, his, uh, his, his letter, his statement, um, while I understand and sympathize with homeowners in the area near the problem property on 9th Street, the current ordinance will create real problems and in inconveniences for current homeowners who have nothing uh, have done nothing wrong. All residents will be subjected to this unnecessary restriction on their private property in order to deal with a single problem uh, property owner. The city is in no position to ascertain the proper number of vehicles, boats, trailers, motorcycles, etc. that a single home should possess and keep on their property. 
much less create a blanket rule that can do anything but create unintended consequences that punish many of our good citizens and neighbors. Houses, property lots, families, and people are varied, and they have varied needs. The city has no way to make these type of judgments. Their propo the proposed ordinance is an encroachment on the very basic nature of property rights, and this creates an infringement to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. This city must not only prove that there is a real need for such an encroachment, but show that they have done the least infringement to address this need. The city has not made this case. <clears throat> Um, Can you tell me who's who? Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Sam Ritter. Um, Sam Ritter. At the end of the day, he, Sam, li where, Sam lives on Second Street. Uh, second or yeah. Second Street. At the end of the day, we should find a solution that fixes the state of problems without creating conditions that inconvenience our city residents who are not the problem. This new ordinance will unfairly target recreational and or work vehicle usage, large families that have greater needs, as well as poor families or property owners in historic communities that have no place to park or have access to an enclosed garage. The action of our elected officials should, at the very least, at the local level, represent the wishes of our voters. This one does not. So those are some of his words, and I, so I kind of cut down on what I'd like to say, um, and I'll try to keep it short, but um, I, I adamantly oppose this bill and the ramifications it's going to have on all the citizens in St. Jen. Um, this, it, it cannot be construed as anything but an ex post facto law, and those are illegal and unconstitutional. You can't create a law to go after one person that's going to affect, uh, affect the whole city. So you're, you are opening yourself up to a class action lawsuit. So it's, it's not only immoral, it's wrong for the city to be thinking that this is the correct way to go about things. Existing nuisance ordinances are in place to address this. Section 215, we've done this before. We've, we know we've done this. If you can't find an attorney, a city attorney that wants to do that, find a new city attorney that can do this. Uh, it's that simple to do that. Uh, the bill is very vague. It doesn't talk about garages. Uh, it's, we've had some talk verbally that says a garage may or may not count. What happens if they have an adjacent lot? What if I have a pr property across town? It's so vague. It's just really not very well thought out. Um, we also have um, uh, commercial entities that are not dressed in this. So if you're a commercial property owner, you can have more than uh, five cars, even though they might be derelict or, or, or not in working order or near working order. So it has some inconsistencies there. The current residents are not grandfathered in, so I'm not sure who's going to enforce this. How are you going to enforce people to sell property after you try to pass this law? You, it, it, it's just, it's, it just blows my mind that the city would think that they can come in and try to force someone to get rid of personal property. Um, but mostly, I, I, I think that um, who is going to uh, enforce this? H how much burden are you going to enforce on everybody in, in the city uh, between police and zoning and the board uh, it's it's in the, in the city attorney and the court the courts that we're gonna have to um, it's just it's just a knee-jerk reaction to something that uh, is not a big enough problem for the city as a whole to create an ordinance for to against all city residents um, I'll close mostly I think it's uh, foolish um, I, I, th those that are proposing this are not showing sound leadership uh, we are creating a slippery slope and setting this and insulting the residents who are good, good law-abiding citizens. Shame on those on the board and the city hall that gave this advice to propose this bill. To stir this much debate and force us into this draconian position is, is just too much. So I, I hope the board reconsiders their effort and, and, and uh, avoids passing this on the second reading tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Tyson Banner. He had to leave. There was a fire call. Oh, Joe. Okay. You know what his is the favorite was his for or against? Um, against. Okay, that's all I needed. Charlie Smith. Thank you, Charlie. Bill Kramer. Where am I going? I feel like the right, come up here, uh, Bill. First of all, I want to thank everybody for showing up. I wish all of our town meetings had this many people in it. It is great. Um, I guess, first of all, you know, I, I got the language from the bill it, itself. So I'm, I tried to make myself as familiar with it as I possibly could. Um, one thing I, I, I noticed right away is uh, trailer and boat trailer are separate. Uh, is there a reason there's a, a, a separation between trailer and boat trailer um, in the trailer or trailer we did boat slash trailer meaning the boat on the trailer would count as one that's 
that was one change that I requested. So there was, if a boat is on a trailer, that's not two, that's one. Okay, but a trailer with an ATV on it would be two, would count it as two. I guess so, according right. to that language. All right, all right. And, and, that's, and that's where I'm heading with this. Um, you know, this, this isn't me, but I know that there are two of my friends that, that, that this does affect. Do you, I'm sorry, and, Bill, do you live in the same? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, yes. I'm, my name's okay. Bill Kramer, Thanks. 211 St. Jude Drive, St. Jemmy, Missouri. Yes. Figured since everybody else. I, I, I apologize for that. Uh, there's a, a couple of my friends, uh, one in particular who has worked hard all his life to provide for his family. He has a very nice house in St. Genevieve. He keeps it up very nice. And he's always been an extremely good family man, always. He has always made sure that he takes his family camping. He takes his kids over to St. Joe Park. They hook their trailer up to their RV. They go over to St. Joe Park and they go ATV riding um, or they go to other places. So between his ATV, his trailer, and his camper, that's, that would count as three. Between his wife's car and his car, he, he's, He's established himself now at five. He's done nothing more in his life but to try and provide for his family a good time. Now, his kids are reaching the age where they're going to have to start driving, and he's going to have to get other vehicles. Now, in order to get another vehicle, he's going to have to make the decision what he's going to get rid of. And that's, that's not, to me, that's not right. That's not fair. Um, but he's going to be over the five. If, if I'm reading this right, if... Mm -hmm. So in my situation, I have got two families living under my roof. Uh, right now I've got three drivers, it will be four. My wife was just given a company car. What, have you all considered what a company car, how that's gonna fall into the equation? Cause it's not gonna be, it wouldn't be our car. It would be someone else's car that resides at our house that we are, that we would have. So would that count against me? I thought we were including, though, one vehicle for every licensed driver in that household. So, right. It is. It is. It is. So by, by that terminology, then if my wife gets a company car, then we got to get rid of a car? No, I, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to throw, a curve, to throw you a curve. I'm just trying to understand for my own satisfaction because we're getting ready to retire. I really don't want her to get rid of her car. It would be best for her to get rid of the company car. Um, you know, someone else was talking about junk. You all have got in, in a city ordinance that de clearly defines junk. I mean, it, it, that's, that's the city code. It's 215.0.80. Uh, and it's, it's pretty broad. It covers plastic, uh, fabric, tires. I think it, it's, it's, it's pretty broad swath. You know, if, if there's junk laying around or tarps that you deem as junk, then use that statute or, or that ordinance. Uh, operable vehicles, I guess we all know what that is. I mean, they got to start and go and forward and reverse and I guess be uh, legitimately operable. I don't know. I don't know the person that this is all targeted against. I have no idea who it is. I'm just, you know, I'm voicing my opinion with, with everybody else and I, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, I think that's about all I've got. Uh, yeah, that's it. So, Thank you, Bill. So a company car would count as a, a car against yes. my, my five? Yeah. It's on your residence. It would, it would. Okay. Even though it's not registered to me, it would. It's on your property. Okay. All right. Okay. That's it. That's all Thank I got. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Allen? Rachel Allen, 399 Washington. I was here a few weeks ago um, and I talked about this. I am totally against it because of the reasons of, uh, well, you did say that we could have a garage, you know, like if we built a garage, but I was wondering, it doesn't specify on the ordinance anything about a garage. That's my concern. 
you know, and it doesn't. It says five maximum. So that's there's there's you know, a lot of confusion on the verbiage of this. But things that I think we're taking for granted that, that need to be should have been spelled out a little bit better. So I But I, get I am that. totally against it. I don't think that just like I said a few weeks ago, I think it's a bonding thing between a father and son to have something to do. If they have older cars, this is a historical town. His, we have cars that are show cars that come in town, you know, things like that. Like, I totally disagree, sure. like I said sure. a few weeks ago, with a whole ordinance. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's about all that I have to say well, because you, well, I already thank talked. You guys already yeah. heard me for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bonnie Samuelson? <coughs> Anita Alsop? Just here to support somebody. Okay. Ed Luttrell? Good evening. My name's Ed Luttrell. I live at 399 North Main Street. I wasn't going to come to this meeting because it was so silly I didn't see how it could happen, but there were some people calling me pretty worried. Uh, Mr. Steiger said everything I was going to say. The guy said in a letter perfectly what I was going to say. I'd like to hear some people get up and talk about who want this law. I look at the people that vote yes on an automatic board. It kind of tells me why they're voting yes on it. They're not in their predicament. I'm way over five vehicles. I have five garages I can put my vehicles in, but I fish. So that means Saturday morning I might go get my boat and set it in my yard. You know, if you go by my house, I might set up my yard. I camp and fish at the same time. So my wife pulls a camper and I pull the boat. So Friday night we get them. I could have 10 vehicles sitting around my property. Now I live in a buyout house that has, it doesn't look bad. You know what I mean? I could see if you live in a little area, but uh, this kind of scares me. Maybe they're going to say tomorrow you can't have a red house. Anybody with a red house has got a year to change it. You know. And then, so if my boat sits in my yard for five hours, is that a violation because I'm over five? If, you know, I can't work on my vehicle. Do I have to switch vehicles? The man's got a company car and he said he, she has to get rid of her personal car if she wants to go to work. I think it needs to be reworked. I really do, that's all I got to say. Thank you very much, Ed. Gus Harmon. <clears throat> Yes, well, I'm in uh, 363 Hope Drive. Uh, this is my first meeting I've ever been to, and um, I'm not really happy with this ordinance or whatever you guys are trying to pass. Now, I don't know where this guy lives, or whoever it is, where he lives at, but I'm not going to, I look at it as a targeting kind of thing. You know, there's a lot of, Seems like from listening to Joe, there's a lot of different ways you guys can go about handling this without trying to involve the whole community. Okay, you're not going to punish the whole community for one person. You know, we're spending a lot of time, and I, and I think it's stupid. We're spending a lot of time, resources, on some that I guess a few people want to pass, you know, to make themselves happy. And I just think it's stupid. That's it. Thank you very much, Thank you, guys. <coughs> That's all I had on my list. Charlie? Yeah, I like Come on up. <laughs> uh, Charlie Smith, 305 North Main. Uh, I guess I got an easy out for all this. By the way, I'm opposed to what y'all are doing. Um, y'all are elected officials next ballot come up with something and let the people of st genevieve vote on that's a democratic way it's the american way everybody gets to vote and then we have no issues <clears throat> me personally i have commercial property i have rental property that will affect my renters and uh, i don't think that this is a this is a very good idea though but like i say democratic way put her on the ballot come up with something it's uh that makes sense that's all i'm gonna say thank you hope, we, hope that was smart and sweet how do you come up with the word you chose charlie put on the ballot stuff that's the best part do we own an attorney 
We hire an attorney. We hire an attorney. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to say that. Sorry. Uh, well, why don't we all put our heads together and and uh, and uh, pay our attorney and get him to come up with something. I, I don't know what the pri the right answer is. I don't know the right terminology. I mean, but trailers and campers and all this stuff. Um, like Ed, he's got a commercial vehicle down there in his boat and stuff. Uh, I see that. Everybody sees it. Um, but you can't expect that man to sell his boat or or get rid of his van that he works <laughs> in. Um, I mean, that's... You can't expect me to get rid of my work truck plus my plus my trailer and stuff like that. So I mean, one of the issues that came up to me and stuff was basically okay if we now limit vehicles, and this has come up in some other communities and stuff. You know, what if somebody parks ten tractors in their yard? This ordinance doesn't cover that, but they can legally do it. One of the things that has come up, and a lot of these people that do small engine repair. And, and resell some of these may have 15, 20 riding horse sitting in their yard. You know, uh, I don't want 20 riding horse. Doesn't our sitting. other ordinance, our nuisance ordinance, doesn't that cover that? No. Um, some of the basics? That's what we need to work on is our nuisance ordinance. And maybe we ought to enforce that a little bit um, and go from there rather than hinder all these good people of St. Genevieve. Just a thought. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Yes, Rachel. I was just wondering about what the guy said with 10 lawnmowers in the yard or whatever, tractors. What if it's a senior citizen that he's a limited on income, but yet he got these tractors at a good deal, they were broke down, he's fixing them, and he's making a little extra money off of them? What about that? Because, you know, the senior citizen, the Social Security is nothing. You want to come back up here, Ed? I'm, I'm right there. I talk pretty loud, but we have the old men that are for this. Give us their reasons why. Maybe it will change some minds that way. But well, we're gonna. We're gonna if, vote we, if we bring it back up on the table, we're gonna have a discussion. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, but I want to make sure I hear your reasons why. I've heard you discuss it before, but I just heard some people say why they were against it. I didn't hear nobody say why they were for it. Okay, I heard Mr. Prince say why he was against it. And Man sitting next to him, but I didn't hear the rest of the same word. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I didn't have my name on the list. Well, you can come up here. Okay. My name is Michelle McGuire. I live at 955 Cedar Lane. Um, I, I've been trying to play devil's advocate, really trying to understand uh, and be knowledgeable about both sides. Um, up to this point, I, I have to say I really disagree with this, and I want you to understand why. I, I live over in Rosier Edition, and I consider myself very fortunate and lucky to live within the city limits. Um, when I talk to people my age, um, it seems to me the going trending thing is to buy property outside the city limits and, and build a big house out on a farm somewhere. And, and I tell people, I, I love our city so much. I, I love living within the city limits. We have a beautiful town. My family, we love walking around town and doing things within the community. And, you know, I could very easily, 
my, my parents, I, I grew up within the city limits and about 14 years ago, my parents bought a small farm um, outside the city limits. I could go build a house out there, but I don't want to. I want to remain in town within the city. It's beautiful. And when I, when I look around my neighborhood, and I was thinking about this today, I looked across the street, and there's a small ranch that was built in the late 60s, early 70s, one car garage. And there are several of those homes in my neighborhood that have one car garages. I have a two car garage, but between my husband and I, my husband has to commute to work, so we've got a little highway car. I have a van, and he's going to get a truck soon. And we thought about getting rid of the car, but he, he's like, oh, it's a great highway car. I have three kids within a couple of years. They're gonna be getting vehicles. And we were just talking about this. I want a golf cart so bad. And you know, we've been saving up for that. Now I'm like, well, shoot, might as well not even do that. I, I want to stay in the city. I do. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And I, I know you guys are going to make the right decision because you guys are awesome. I know, I know, I know you will. So like everybody else said, I, I believe everybody that came up here said they were against it. And I know you'll, you'll listen to the voices of the community and do what's best. So that's it. Thank you, very much. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am, you have to come sit right next to me. State your name and address. Just speak into the microphone. Over here. Right here. You got my number. I know you have. No, my name is Ann Fowler, and I really, I don't, I, I only have one vehicle, but. What's your address, Ann? 1045 Ridgeway. But I sit here and I really I really came hoping it was there was something else that I was interested in, but this is interesting. If I if you have a nuisance ordinance, why don't everybody go take a look at that nuisance and why can't we even get up a petition? But why does everybody have to suffer because I seen it it is a nuisance. Psst, psst. These are the ones that have to vote, not me. Well, you do have a vote, don't you? No. Oh. Only in the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that's that's all I really have to say. But I just don't understand what's the big what's the big deal. I mean, that people's property. I used to always tell my kids, your property ends for where you paid for it. And I I don't I mean I don't like a nuisance. But I don't, everybody that's talking here don't sound like a nuisance to me. But that, I've seen it. I live close to it. And if, yes, <laughs> what's that look? But anyway, I do. I live close to it and it's terrible. I mean, I don't know why, I mean snakes. I wouldn't want to live next to it. And I'd start a petition if it was me, but I don't understand why all these people have to be affected by it. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Ann. You're welcome. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. I just have a question. Can I yes, ma'am. How will other small towns deal with this problem? I mean, I just want to say I understand what you're trying to do. You're really trying to protect everybody's property and the value of their property. That's right. And that's very important. And I think sometimes I'm very fortunate because everywhere I look out of my house. I wish you would come up here and speak okay. into the microphone. All right. I'm just saying. You're on the bye board. There has to be a solution to the situation. Because. What's your stop? <laughs> What's your address? My name is Anita Alsop, and I live at 195 Weiner Street. And I'm very happy that I don't have the problem that many of you have. But I know that in order to maintain the value of your properties, it's very important that you have respect for all your neighbors 
and what they present. How you manage to get to that, I think, is something that it's going to take a lot of thought. But I know that if I had somebody that I had to look at with all different kinds of vehicles and used cars on a lot, I would be upset about it too because I'm a very visual person. And when I look out my window, I like to see something that uplifts my attitude and doesn't depress me. And I was fortunate to live at Lake Forest for probably 22 years. And they have a lot of rules out there. And nobody likes rules. But when you buy a house out there and you go by the rules, your property is probably going to increase in value. It's not going to decrease. And I know the board there struggles with the same issue as people who don't have respect for other people's property. And that's where the whole solution lies. But my question is, how do other small towns deal with the same issue? Mayor, Joe. One call to this week to the Missouri Municipal League, and I won't mention his name, but he's, uh, he gave a list of about five different suggestions. And when I told him what the city was doing, he was kind of dumbfounded that the city was taking this approach. And he had multiple cities that had the same problem. Every city has this problem. And he had a list of four or five different ways that other cities have taken care of this. And that's the Missouri Municipal League. We're a member of that. And they're our resource, and we pay for it. And they're a great resource. Thank you, Joe. That's all I have to say. I hope you find a solution. I do, too. I have just one quick question. Is there not a fire ordinance that can be used in these cases? Because well, our city administrator answered that question. Things? It's going to be, you don't want me to use the word. I'm the daughter of a firefighter, the wife of a firefighter, the mother of a fire cop. And when I drive by these houses, it's my first thought. These catch fire. Somebody should get hurt or killed. The city has adopted the international, the city has adopted the international fire code. It does not address this issue. But what do we do about homes? that are creating a potential fire trap. They can be declared a public nuisance, but there needs to be... But do we use it? Yes, we have. <coughs> then why can't we use it on these houses? It's, it's not the houses, it's the vehicles. <laughs> it's the same as having a yard full of tires. You catch a tire on fire, it's going to be a mess. Come to the, come you got to come up here, yes. Mark, you got to leave. My name's Bob Ruff. I live at 898 Jefferson Street. And I, I want to commend all you aldermen for addressing this. And I know it's not pleasant. You've done a good job, a little more work to do. And look at the participation. I'm glad to see people in the community act on this. Now, I, I want to try to, in my mind, simplify what most of us have said tonight. If you have a piece of property with 10 vehicles on it, and this ordinance is in effect, you make them get rid of five. Have you eliminated the problem? No, you reduced it, but it's still there. You got to do something different. And dictating to all of us, I don't think that's the solution. Because like has been said over and over tonight, a lot of people that shouldn't be affected, that should not be affected, will be affected. So let's, do, let's work on it some more. Do something different. And like I said, I love to see this participation. I've been to a few meetings where there's four or five citizens there. You did a good job. Look at all these people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. One last call for public comments before we go on with the meeting. 
I want to thank you very, all of you very, very much. It was very, it was a hot topic and it, you were all very respectful of one another and uh, that shows the character of this town, what it can, what it can be. Takes us to the consent agenda. Got to hand out the. Yeah, they have a moment. Got to hand out the uh, minutes from the closed session. Oops. Sir. Agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Takes us to old business. Bill number 4294. This is the second reading of Bill number 4294, an ordinance amending the City of St. Genevieve Code of Ordinance, Chapter 405, Zoning Regulations, Article 5, Supplementary and Special Uses and Regulations as set forth below. Take that as a no vote and no action will be taken on this bill. What well, takes us to new business, bill number 4295, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a proposal for construction and inspection material and materials testing with Cochran Engineering for Chadwell Lane Improvements Project. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. We'd like to have a, I'd like to have a motion for a second reading. Second reading. Second. second. I'd like to have a roll call vote, please. You have to read it again. Got to read it again. Okay. <laughs> I'll get it right one of these times. Sorry. Before I read it, we had a motion to second. So you say all in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 An ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a proposal for the construction inspection of materials testing with Cochrane Engineering for Chadwell Lane Improvements Project. Second. Second. Wait a minute. Wait. Yeah. Roll call, please. Alderwoman Johnson. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Jokers. Yes. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Jones. Yes. Alderman Prince. Yes. Alderman Wolfen. Yes. Seven yes, zero no's, one absent. Bill number 4295 now becomes ordinance 4224. Takes us to bill number 4296, an ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to enter an agreement with Jokers Incorporated of St. Genevieve, Missouri for the Chadwell Lane Improvements Project in the amount not to exceed $136,191.40. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to have a motion. For the second reading? Motion for a second reading. Second. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Bill number 4296, an ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Jokers Incorporated of St. Genevieve, Missouri for the Chadwell Lane improvements in the amount not to exceed $136,191.40. Second. second. I can have a roll call vote. Alderman Wolfen? Yeah. Alderman Prince? Yes. Alderman Jones? Yes. Alderman Rainey? Yes. Alderman Jokerst? Did you say yes? Yeah. I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah. Alderman Donovan? Yes. Alderwoman Johnson? Yes. Seven yes, zero no's, one absent. Bill number 4296 now becomes ordinance 4225. Before we move on, let's discuss asphalt or concrete. The, the approval is for the maximum the amount. Maximum you can still opt for the asphalt option. If we were to do asphalt, can we spend the remaining on the rest of Chadwell that needs it? We can spend, yes. And there's still going to be somewhat of an incline there, right? Yes. And the larger trucks trying to take away or take off from asphalt is going to cause issues where part of it needs to that first few feet should be concrete, I would 
I'm thinking concrete up there on that landing. I don't know how many feet, how many feet is that? The issue we got is is the getting people in and out of there for deliveries right. and stuff. Right. Well, That's my kind of concern length. Is, is can we mix the mix it and have the first so many feet concrete, you know, where they're taking off and then do the rest of it in asphalt to try to save some money and use it down the street a little further? You know, this or is does real, it have to be all or nothing? Yeah, this is okay. real similar to the one out off of uh, right Lots. back to Southtown Field, Lots which is road. asphalt. And they've always got fuel trucks coming out of there, or some fuel trucks be coming out of there from Iowa. But oil. it's less of an in incline there. It's more level out there. Ours is still going to be at an incline. I would, it was explained to me that it was the same incline. Yeah, it would be the same incline the way I was understanding. Not according to the drawings. All right. So is the incline... On Chadwell Kirk, is it staying the same? No, it's going to be. No, it's we're going to be. Yeah, we're we're, we're filling, filling Chadwell, yeah, and then tapering the it down until it meets the current grade at the bottom of the hill. No, I know, I know what you're talking about. I just wanted to make sure that this at the tallest point is well. about five foot of fill. I sure. I mean, uh, uh, the fact that you're authorizing the expenditure doesn't preclude you from spending that amount or any other amount as we consider the overlay work to be done in the city. Uh, so uh, he, I think that's not, that's not an issue. And but I, I can... Have any requirement? A lot of times... You the, state, the state had to approve the construction plans, but they, they approved either concrete or asphalt. They've already, they've already reviewed it. there, they were only doing concrete approaches. Yeah. They, they've accepted either alternative. You know, this is not a residential mix, it's a commercial mix also, right. which is different. Different phase, different mix. Mm -hmm. You know, the time frame is what I was most concerned about because it, you know, if they put concrete, it was explained to me they'd have to do it in two lanes. Do one lane, get it up, you know, and then seven, ten days before you can drive on it. Trying to keep the other lane open, you know, it's a hazard enough intersection without adding construction there and stuff. Yeah, or asphalt, uh, once it's brought up to grade, in one day it would be paved and you can drive one at the next. Bob, do you know if there's a difference in weight rating? Like the concrete's rated for a certain weight, the asphalt? No, the weight for asphalt is a function of the base. So the, if, you, if you're... So what's above it is a non-player? It's just the wearing surface. The whole key is the base on this project, whether it goes asphalt or concrete. You can for concrete, Does, you know... The raised elevation, there's a lot of base under it. Martin, you know how many feet we're talking? You know, I, uh, yes, but I don't want to shoot from the hip. But it's it's 270 feet. And what's the major, who's the major player that we impact by the, the length of the project? Bob. And, and, the, and, the, and, and the nursing home. Yeah. The nursing home. They, they have trucks going in. in and out the back of that. We can't get in from South 10th Street because of the railroad tracks. So narrow down to one lane, the impact for you is what? Yes, it would narrow Serious, down. Serious, like critical impact to your? It isn't property. the narrowing down so much as the time involved. Uh, how I've, long the road's going to be blocked. The nursing home gets so two deliveries. In, or, in, in, in order to keep... Pretty critical. Right. It, it, they, they won't be able to move on to the second lane until the first lane is cured because that's where they'll have to direct the traffic. So you delay the project by phasing the, 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 the construction. But there will always be access via one lane. No, one, no. It, 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 it will be closed to traffic except when they coordinate access with the contractor. And so the contractor will talk to, to Bob, they'll talk to the administrator of the nursing home, they'll schedule deliveries to, so it coincides with, with their construction schedule and there won't ever be a day where you can't make the delivery. I'm, and is there any way... Unless you do concrete. <laughs> concrete would obviously... Yeah. Is there any way to, to, to talk to the railroad and get it? Temporary? I've done that. Just temporary. I've done that. They didn't even respond. I did get a call from their attorney, the same one that was there when we met the last time and stuff, but after that I heard nothing. 
one other point I think that Gary Roth had made, you know, as far as snow removal, blacktop uh, snow removal was a lot sooner and a lot quicker off the blacktop as compared to concrete. The, the, and the, and the, and the, yeah. The issue though, Bob, is is you look at Rosier Street, the asphalt on that, it's starting already. You know, you need right. it. And and that's the problem. You know, if you're gonna build something other than what well, I guess we just have to re asphalt it and you know spend throw more money at it if it doesn't hold up. That's my and I, I sympathize sure. with your problem there, but no, the concrete really up. is what needs to a good I don't know, that's that's not but Martin says the basis. That's Basis critical. The same, right? If you're doing asphalt, yeah, you don't need any base for concrete. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're 30 years versus 15 years is what? Probably so. In 15 is a, a best case scenario. Very best case. Yeah, there's right. space under the concrete also. That you can pour concrete on dirt. <laughs> it just depends on how much concrete you pour. Right. <sighs> Would it, would it be asking too much to have input directly from uh, care center uh, management to see? I mean, food deliveries are pretty critical, so. But they've got that where they can coordinate them. They're still going to happen. It's just going to be inconvenient. Is the impression I'm getting? Same no, for you, she Bob. doesn't. She does, I talked to her about that. She doesn't have enough storage up there to maintain, you know, too much space. They only got so much food right. space. So their they're tractor trailer delivery today, right? And they won't have access. They won't be able to do that. Is what we're saying. They will be able yeah. to do it, but they'll have to coordinate the timing with the construction activity. So inconvenient, but possible. Right. right. There's going to be a point in time when they're putting fill in there. There is going to be no access through there. You know, when they're raising that road five feet, they're not going to raise one lane and raise the other. They're going to put all the fill in there. You know, as soon as they can, and then a package mm -hmm. where you can drive over it. But that would be for asphalt or concrete. But, you know, if you ever try to take a tractor trailer out of the ground, yeah, that's, that's going to be in the way, though, Bob. You're not right. going to get out of there. But. Well, and they, if they manage a schedule where the fill goes in in between crucial deliveries, maybe we can time that strategically and make that work. If we were to get yeah, approval from the railroad, would the nursing home still be able to get happen. there? That ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. We've been down that road for two years. Because I even offered to, you know, to let the nursing home, if they would put the crossing back in, to let the nursing home use our road and cross our property to get to them. And we don't have any control over that, Mark, as far as, as, far as access over a railroad crossing? No. Yeah. No, they're exempt from any municipal cause. Almost. But certainly with regard to the crossing of the tracks, there's nothing. The city, the city does not play a role in that. I would like to see a mixture of uh, the first, I don't know, 50 or so feet being concrete. I can address that. Feet, but, you know, I, I'll leave it up to you guys. I'll <coughs> well, that's a, we, we, you guys got to, we got to make a decision here. I mean, we could talk about this all night long, and we're just going to have to make a decision. We've, we've always maintained if we're going to do something, we need to do it right. And we need to do and, it with concrete. But yet there's also compromise in that decision right. as well. And, I would like to see at least the first, I don't know, 50 to 100 feet of it where the trucks will really be taking off and getting going uh, to be able to concrete right there. Uh, the approach to 60 yard right at 61. Would we have uh, to go back to MoDOT and get that all re-engineered? No. If we're going to do it, let's do it concrete or do it asphalt. Let's don't mix it. Let's just make a decision and vote. I, I, I'm sorry, guys. I need it spelled out for me. Can we define any business operations that will fail if we, in the time frame that we do this in concrete? I don't think anybody's going to fail, but greatly inconvenienced. And that might mean too. There might be have to. They might have to. You know, with the with the they can get the care center, we might have to take it. They might have to get a truck and and yeah, park in Lucent's parking lot and come over the crossing with a smaller truck. That's the problem. Is that grade? Delivery from their front door. Well, that's not going to work very well. Well, they could because they the kitchen's work. right through there too. Exactly. So, and they're, they breed, redesigned everything and put a bunch of traffic out on the chat. Well, wasn't very, you know, that's because, exactly. you know, so. So if we're flexible, we can get the long-term solution with concrete. Nothing's yeah. going to fail with the information that we know right now. 
I vote for concrete, all of them. Nobody else can vote. I support you. Mike, you say concrete? Yes. Concrete. Joe? I'm leaning towards concrete. Bryant? I would lean towards concrete as well. Well? Concrete. Asphalt. Susie? Concrete. Concrete it is. Thank you. Takes us to bill number 4297, an ordinance approving a bid proposal from IDEX Laboratories for the purchase of lab equipment for the waste water treatment plant in the amount not to exceed $7,208.50. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any other business? With that being said, I need a motion to go into closed session. Motion to go into closed session. Second. To discuss the real estate. For the purpose of real estate. Real estate. Second. Roll call vote, please. Alderwoman Johnson. Yes. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Jokers. Yes. Alderman Rainey. Yes. Alderman Jones. Yes. Alderman Prince. Yes. Alderman Wolfen. Yes. Motion carries at 7-11.